Laura and David Thompson had always dreamed of owning a beautiful, historic home. So, when they stumbled upon a grand Victorian-era house nestled in a quiet neighborhood, they knew they had found the perfect place. The house was old but well-preserved, with ornate woodwork, stained glass windows, and an expansive kitchen that immediately caught Laura's eye. The couple moved in quickly, eager to make the house their own. Laura, a food enthusiast and amateur chef, was particularly excited about hosting dinner parties in their new home. The kitchen, with its vintage stove and spacious layout, seemed the ideal place to create culinary masterpieces. To celebrate their new home, Laura and David decided to host a dinner party for a few close friends. They spent days preparing, planning an elaborate menu, and decorating the dining room with candles, fresh flowers, and antique silverware they had found in the house. Everything was set for a perfect evening. On the night of the dinner party, the house was filled with the warm glow of candles and the rich aroma of roasting meat and freshly baked bread. Laura bustled around the kitchen, putting the finishing touches on the meal while David greeted their guests at the door. Their friends, Mark and Emily and Susan and Tom, arrived, full of compliments for the house and excitement for the evening. The group was close-knit, having known each other for years, and the atmosphere was light and filled with laughter. As they settled into the dining room, Laura brought out the first course, a creamy butternut squash soup garnished with fresh herbs. The guests eagerly dug in, praising Laura's culinary skills. But as they ate, a strange tension seemed to fill the room. I don't know if it's just me, Susan said with a nervous laugh, but does anyone else feel like we're being watched? David chuckled, dismissing the comment. It's an old house, probably just the creaks and groans of the wood settling. The others nodded, trying to shake off the uneasy feeling, but the sensation lingered, an unsettling undercurrent that none of them could quite explain. As Laura returned to the kitchen to prepare the main course, she noticed something odd. The stove, which had been turned off, was now glowing red hot, as if it were being used. Confused, she checked the knobs. They were all in the off position. She stepped back, her heart pounding, trying to rationalize what she was seeing. Suddenly, a whisper echoed through the kitchen. It was faint at first, just a soft murmur, but it grew louder, more insistent. The words were unclear, but the tone was unmistakably malevolent. Laura froze, the hair on the back of her neck standing on end. She looked around, but the kitchen was empty. The whispering continued filling the room with a cold, oppressive presence. Panicking, she grabbed the roasting pan and hurried back to the dining room, hoping to shake off the eerie experience. As she served the main course, a perfectly cooked beef roast with vegetables, the guests started to chat again, though there was still an underlying tension in the air. But as they began to eat, things started to go horribly wrong. Emily was the first to notice, she had just cut into her slice of roast when it suddenly slid off her plate, as if pushed by an invisible hand. She gasped, staring in disbelief as the meat moved on its own, landing on the tablecloth. What the hell? Tom muttered, his fork clattering to the table as his vegetables began to shift on his plate. The others quickly noticed similar occurrences. Food sliding utensils rattling and glasses tipping over without being touched. The laughter and conversation died instantly, replaced by a stunned silence. The guests looked at each other, fear slowly dawning in their eyes. Is this some kind of joke? Mark asked, his voice tight with anxiety. David, just as shaken, shook his head. No, I have no idea what's going on. The whispers returned louder this time, filling the dining room with a chorus of disembodied voices. They seemed to emanate from the walls, the floor, and most disturbingly, from the food itself. The words were still indistinct, but the intent was clear. They were not welcome here. 
Laura's heart raced as she tried to regain control of the situation. Let's just, let's just finish the meal, okay? It's probably just a draft or something. But no one moved to eat. The food on the plates had taken on a sinister quality, as if something malevolent was infused into every bite. The whispers grew louder, angrier, and the candles flickered violently, casting long, twisting shadows on the walls. Realizing that something was terribly wrong, David stood up and tried to open the dining room door, but it wouldn't budge. He tugged harder, panic setting in as he discovered that all the doors were locked from the outside. We need to get out of here, Susan said, her voice trembling. Something's not right. The others agreed, abandoning their seats and trying the windows, but they too were sealed shut, as if the house itself was trapping them inside. The whispers reached a fever pitch, almost deafening, as the room began to feel like it was closing in on them. The temperature dropped suddenly, their breath visible in the icy air. The lights flickered and the shadows seemed to dance and writhe, growing darker and more ominous. What the hell is happening? Emily cried, backing away from the table as the food started to move more violently, pieces of meat and vegetables twisting and writhing like living creatures. Laura, shaking with fear, realized the truth. It's the house, she whispered. It doesn't want us here. Just as the words left her mouth, the tableware flew off the table, crashing against the walls. The chandelier above them swung wildly, threatening to fall. The voices grew louder, screaming now, filled with anger and pain. In the chaos, a ghostly figure materialized at the head of the table. It was the spirit of a woman, her face gaunt and twisted with rage. She wore a tattered dress, stained with something dark and ominous, and her eyes were hollow, filled with a deep, unending sorrow. This is our home, the spirit hissed, her voice echoing with the whispers. You dare to feast in our house? You will pay the price. David stepped forward, trying to reason with the apparition. We didn't know. Please. We just wanted to have a dinner party. We meant no harm. The spirit's eyes locked onto him, cold and unforgiving. You are trespassers in a place of death. You have disturbed our peace. As she spoke, the horrific truth began to unfold. Laura and David's new home had once belonged to a wealthy family who had died tragically in a mass poisoning incident during a dinner party many years ago. The entire family and their guests had perished, their souls trapped within the house, forever reliving their final moments. We can't leave, the spirit continued, her voice tinged with despair. And now, neither can you. The air in the room thickened with the weight of the spirits, pressing down on the group. The food on the table had transformed, revealing its true form, rotten, decayed and crawling with maggots. The stench was unbearable, and the guests recoiled in horror. The spirit pointed a bony finger at the table. You must finish the meal. Only then can you leave. The guests exchanged terrified glances. How could they possibly eat the foul, cursed food? But the alternative was clear. Remain trapped in this nightmare, forever tormented by the vengeful spirits. Reluctantly, Laura reached for a fork, her hand trembling. She forced herself to take a bite, gagging as the rancid taste filled her mouth. The others followed suit, choking down the disgusting food, tears streaming down their faces. With each bite, the voices grew softer, the temperature began to rise, and the shadows receded. The spirit watched them closely, her expression unreadable as they struggled to finish the meal. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the plates were empty. The room fell silent, the oppressive atmosphere lifting slightly. The spirit nodded, a flicker of sadness in her hollow eyes. You may go, she whispered before fading away into the darkness. The doors and windows creaked open and the guests wasted no time in fleeing the house. They stumbled out into the night, 
gasping for fresh air, their bodies trembling with the aftershocks of their ordeal. Laura and David stood on the lawn, staring back at the house in disbelief. The once welcoming home now loomed over them, dark and foreboding. They knew they could never return. We're never coming back here, David said, his voice hoarse. Laura nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. We'll sell it. Move far away. The others agreed, vowing to never speak of what had happened. They left in silence, their friendships forever scarred by the horrors they had endured. Months later, the house sat empty, its windows boarded up, and a for sale sign planted in the overgrown front yard. Rumors began to spread about the cursed house, of the tragic events that had taken place within its walls, and the ghostly dinner party that no one survived. But as time passed, new owners eventually moved in, drawn by the allure of the historic property and its bargain price. And on the first night in their new home, they decided to host a dinner party to celebrate. Little did they know, the table was already set, and the guests of honor were waiting. 